A few years ago, I walked into my local supermarket and stumbled upon this, a brand new Trappist ale. Giddy with surprise, I bought it and hurriedly ran home to drink it. But it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. The Belgians have been doing this sort of thing for a very long time, and so today we're going to find out exactly what is the difference between a Belgian brewed and a British brewed Trappist ale. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes that's right today we're going to take a look at these two different Trappist beers to try and work out how similar something just with the label Trappist on it can really be or whether there's a very massive divergence and it's really just about where it was brewed and not who it was brewed by. Now of course as I said in the intro Belgium has been throwing out Trappist ales for absolutely donkeys there's also a load in France and in the Netherlands and it's a pretty common occurrence over in Europe. In the UK, however, I've got a sneaking suspicion that Tim Meadow aren't the only producer of Trappist Ale in the UK, but there's definitely not many. So what are the beers we're taking a look at today? Well, firstly, from the UK, as I said, this is Tint Meadow English Trappist Ale. It's rocking in at 7.4%. Here's a quick look at the bottle for you. And, well, you know, it's a 330ml bottle, as is the Belgian stuff, and it's a strong ABV, as is the Belgian stuff. And if we look at the designs, well, yeah, they're all kind of singing very much from the same hymn sheet. On the subject of design though, I've been on the website for Tint Meadow and they said that it's basically inspired by some old scripture texts, religious doodars, um, but it does look distinctly similar to the Trappist Rock 4, so yeah, I don't know whether it's just they've both been influenced by the same thing or whether it's just conveniently similar and I'm not sure my marketing critic head very much on, on that one. But on the other side, representing Belgium, Trappist Rock 4, this is their number eight, and this one is rocking in at a whopping 9.2%. So, why have I chosen these two? The ABVs are both high, but not necessarily similar. What do I say for the uh, 7.4 versus uh, 9.2? There's still a pretty decent gap there. But these are both kind of sat at the extremes of what you consider a triple to be. However, they're both dark beers, which is not normally what a triple is, so I just thought, I don't know, interesting head-to-head -head on that point. I guess strong double style or lower quad style, I don't really know, but it is what it is. They're both Trappist beers, they're both dark beers, and they're both strong enough so that you're not going to be able to satisfy any women later, which in hindsight might have been by design. Who knows? And if you're wondering, Tom, what really is the point of this video? Well, there's two points. One is that I've had this, well, I've had both of them, but I've had Tim Meadow once, maybe twice, and always just kind of come away going, ah, it's not really what I expected it to be. But I've never had it in close proximity to what I would call the real deal, or at least what I would expect from someone like Trappist Rock 4. So, you know, it's nice to put them head to head. And ultimately, I get to sit here and drink Trappist ales to make another video with, so that's a win too. Now I don't really have kind of generic appropriate Trappist glasses, certainly not two in the same style, so we're just going for kind of craft taster glasses for this one, as we often do. Um, one thing I should notice actually, Tint Meadow, so the, the kind of text here, as I said, that's meant to be like some old scripture stuff, uh, but their other logo, which looks like, uh... oh it's on the lid, sorry. Uh, I don't know which way round it's meant to be, but these three, these three things, they are meant to look like the windows of something in the in the in the I was about to say the tapestry. That's not the right word, is it? Monastery. Anyway, wherever they brew the beer, uh, it's meant to look like some old windows that have a very particular name that I have subsequently forgotten. So let's get it open. There we go, full pour into the glass, and I reckon, based on what I just saw at the end there, I think these may be bottle conditioned. Can't tell, but I'm pretty sure it is, and I'm very confident that will be the case for the Trappist Rock 4. So, Tint Meadow, 
it is a it looks very dark on camera in truth it's kind of a deep ruby ale think it's a bit more i'd say amber ruby but darker if that makes sense it's both like it's got a darker but also pinkier hue about it it's got this quite lovely um properly kind of almost toffee colored head about it that seems to be sticking around despite the pretty high abv on the nose this beer is also kind of what i expect from a trappist ale it's maybe not as zingy and fruity as a lot of the belgian equivalents but but it has got quite a lot of that nice almost kind of sweet shop yeast thing along with some red deep dark fruits and some lashings of i guess caramel malt it's um it's far from offensive on the nose let's say that much before we compare though uh i think you've already seen this but here you go again trappist rock four i think if memory serves me correctly they were originally french and then moved to belgium possibly or am i thinking of someone else who knows anyway Let's get into it. Looking a bit lighter, this one. And a lot more lively. I mean, that basically is all of the beer. There's a tiny splash left in there, but I don't think we'll bother. Looking at these side by side, I'll tell you what, they're incredibly close. The Tint Meadow is a touch, touch darker. That's this one. Um, but the head looks like it's in better condition, not going to lie. The Trappist Rock 4 has just got this kind of horribly kind of broken head on it. It's not, it's not looking great. I know it's only just been poured, but I don't see it getting to this point. So actually, on visual appearance, i point over to the UK because... It does just look like a better beer. The aroma on the Trappist Rock 4. Oh, immediately, immediately. If I get half a whiff of some Belgian Trappist ale, I'm all over it. It's, yeah, it's fruitier, it's zingier, it's sweet fruits and citrus in abundance. There's still quite a lot of that nice sweet malt character. It's kind of more crystal malt. I don't know necessarily what it is, but you know what I mean? It's more sweet and refreshing malt it's almost leaning more towards being like a lager malt but not quite there it's still deep and rich but it's funny because i think someone who really didn't like their beer would sniff these two and go ah, it's basically the same it's basically the same but there are some big small differences if that makes any sense at all on looks, Tint Meadow, as I've already said, is smashing it. There you go. The both beers have settled down now. That Tint Meadow beer, the conditioning is unreal. However, whilst both have good aroma, that Trappist Rock 4 just, it gives me what I want out of this situation, basically. It is just there. It is really, yes. Anyway, let's get into them, shall we? Apologies if the audio just changed. I'm uh, an absolute buffoon and didn't hit record on the main mic, so it might be picking me up off this thing, which isn't quite as good, but hopefully you've stayed with us this far. Anyway, let's get down to it. We're going to go for the Tint Meadow first. So as I said, this is a 7.4% beer, and the fact that that's the weakest thing I'm drinking today is a concern, if I'm honest, but it is what it is. Right then, let's give it a go. Cheers. And there is that drop-off. That thing that just makes you go, it's not what I was expecting. It looks fantastic. The smell is very, very good. But the taste, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. If someone said, Tom, here is a fantastic strong ale from... The thing about beers like Old Tom, ironically, um, you know, uh, King Goblin from Witchwood, you know those old school but still high ABV beers, those ones that were strong pre kind of the craft trend for stronger beer they had this kind of super intense super rich spiky is the word i'm going to go for it's a combination of the alcohol hit and this really roast heavy thing from the malt despite it not being a stout somehow it just comes together to produce something that really just 
yeah, smacks you around the back of the teeth, so to speak. It's just, now I'm analyzing it, I will say that the front of this beer, the bit right on the front of the tongue is superb. It really is, it is fantastic. But there's this kind of, just kind of visceral, almost archaic throwback, traditional intensity as soon as it gets to the mid palate the bitterness takes over and you can't appreciate properly or certainly i can't those nice sweet and floral nuances up front which is just a little bit of a shame so then on to the trappist rock four number eight this one coming in at 9.2 percent wish me luck and yeah i mean visually it just doesn't the tint meadow still i've had a few sips it still looks better loads better in fact that head is well it's a work of art has to be said despite some criticisms on the flavor it is an absolute work of art however this i'm expecting i'll be honest to be a little bit of a massacre it's just gonna well, let's just do it shall we cheers oh yeah mm, maybe maybe so mm, the flavor in the trappist rock 4 i do prefer I'm not gonna lie. Toffee, sweets up front, bit of citrus kicks in. Beautiful, almost pretzely bready malt at the back end. It just does the business in terms of the deliveries of flavors I want from this type of beer. But the conditioning on this is piss poor. Honestly, it is shockingly shit. I've sworn twice now, I don't normally swear in my video. It's like, I, it's only because I'm doing this comparatively, but it's a bit too fizzy, it's flat as anything at the same time, it's like it's under and over carbonated. I'm going to swirl it around in the glass for a minute to see if we can get rid of a bit of that. You see how quickly that head comes back? Because right now it's just, it's a bit of a flat washy experience in terms of the liquid, but then once it's in your mouth it's spiking all over the place and it's just a bit interrupting when you're trying to dial out those flavours. Um, but the flavors are fantastic. I am though gonna come straight back in for a sip of the Tint Meadow because frankly, it's an absolute joy to have an old school style beer out of a bottle with conditioning that good. That should be the takeaway here. Yes, okay, the flavor profile might be, I don't wanna say it's not good because that's not true. I think it's doing itself a disservice. I think they've gone to the effort and managed to get in all these little nuances up front and all these little, you know, the, the variety, the breadth of flavor that really beer snobs like me are looking for and then just something towards the back kind of ruins it and makes it non-viable in terms of a I guess a delicate and nuanced palette but at the same time the conditioning is so unfeasibly good and it's not something I'd noticed when I initially had them before it's a relatively fresh bottle this um, goes out of date on the 5th of the 1st 2025 which for reference is about 18 months from now, just, just less. Um, I reckon they probably ship these with a two year shelf life. So we're a quarter into its good realm, if you like. Um, meanwhile, the Trappist Rock 4 is good until uh, the, the heavens open and someone rains fire upon the earth and the rest of it. Uh, yeah, there you go, 28th of November, 2027. It's currently 2023. So this was probably made in 2022 and has a five year lifespan, which I find fascinating, to be honest, because this is a bottle conditioned beer. In the UK right now, craft breweries are putting, what, six months on some stuff because, oh, it's, well, you know, it's hand conditioned and we're a bit worried about it. I know these guys have been doing it a long time, but five years, that's insane. Unfortunately though, I don't think in that span of five years, the condition is going to improve but my goodness the taste i want that flavor with that condition because it is just it is it's a truly divine intervention i think it's actually i'm gonna to have to stop with the religious puns because the trap is busy and I, I, I can't help myself for it. i can't help myself the baby jesus made me do it all right that's all i can say anyway i'm just rambling now I think the takeaway from this is, in terms of that nuanced, refined flavor profile, the Belgians, at least in this case, are still smashing it out of the pot completely. That said, they've had a hell of a long time, that was another pun but unintended, to get it right. The Tint Meadow, not been going all that long really in comparison, so 
only five to ten years, I reckon. Uh, I can't remember now. I'll put it on screen. But that kind of region. Meanwhile, Trappist Rock 4 date back to... Also not a didgeridoo. We'll put that on screen as well. But, look, it is what it is. The condition on this, I can't praise it highly enough for that. It is phenomenal. But, ultimately, that flavour profile is what gets you going back to something and if we can just get a little bit of this into this format then actually i quite can't really believe i'm saying this but tim meadow will smash it and i say that because i think when i first tried this i wasn't really wowed and i think i wasn't analyzing it i was just sipping it just having a beer in a social setting or something and as a result i wasn't able to Kind of pick out where it was going wrong if that makes sense because on just an initial judgment you go it gets too bitter too quickly very dry at the back end eh. where in reality the flavors between these two are very similar it's just the delivery of them in terms of the intensity is smashed by trappist rock for and i know i've said it a million times but i'm going to say it one more you need to go buy some of this just because the conditioning at least on this bottle is incredible and now i'll stop waffling so yeah that's it and that really is all i've got to say about it so as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you'll be so kind and i'll catch you next time cheers